There it is, a joy to have Marco with us, and we're going to ask him to come and share with us now. God bless you, Marco. You're very welcome here. Thank you, Pastor. Well, I want to thank you, Reverend Matt McLaughlin, if I can pronounce it right. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> and uh, for, the, uh, kind, for his kindness. I would like to ask you kindly, uh, before we uh, go into the, uh, um, my testimony and the report, to turn the scriptures to Second Chronicles chapter 33. Second Chronicles chapter 33. The book of Second Chronicles, Chronicles chapter 33. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. But did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abomination of the Ethan, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. For he built the, again, the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had broken down. And he reared up altars for Baalim, and made groves, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven, and served them. And he also he built altars in the house of the Lord, whereof the Lord had said, I in Jerusalem shall, be, in Jerusalem shall my name be forever. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Also he observed times and used enchantments and used witchcrafts and dealt with a familiar spirit and with wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. And he set a carved image, the idol which he had made, in the house of God, of which God has said to David and to Solomon his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I any more remove the foot of Israel from out of the land which I have appointed for, for your fathers, so that they will take heed to do all that I have commanded them according to the old law and the statutes and the ordinances by the hand of Moses. So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err and to do worse than the Ethan, whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns, and bound him with fetters, and carried him to Babylon. And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God, and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers, and prayed unto him, and he was entreated of him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord he was God. Now, after this, he built a wall without the city of David on the west side of Gihon in the valley, even, into the, even to the entering in at the fish gate, and compassed about Ophel, and raised it up in a very, great, a very great height, and put captains of war in all the fenced cities of Judah. And he took away the strange gods and the idol out of the house of the Lord and all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord and in Jerusalem cast them out of the city and repaired the altar of the Lord and sacrificed their own peace offerings and ten conferences and commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. Nevertheless, the people did sacrifice still in high places yet unto the Lord their God only. To this, to this verse, the reading of scriptures. Let's have a, let us have a wee word of prayer before we go to the scriptures.
O Lord, we come before thy presence on this Lord's Day morning. We thank thee, O Lord, for Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. O Lord, we thank thee for Christ, you sent, thou sent, it, sent him to die for us while we were yet sinners. When we were without strength, mm. there is no work of ours which could meet, possibly meet the requirements of thy divine justice. Christ did it all. Christ did it all. And we're saved by grace. And we thank thee, O Father, that we are thy children, heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ, no merit of our own, but all because thou didst love us first. Mm. Help us, O Lord, to focus on Christ, to look unto him, the author and finisher of our faith. Prepare our hearts to sit around thy table. Renew our strength and our faith. And we ask these things in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who is ever blessed with thee. Amen. I, my name is Marco Reale, but in Ireland, in, in England, they pronounce it Real. They may be Spanish or, or really, they may be Irish. So you can choose which pronunciation you want to ascribe to my surname. I'm sure I am terrible in pronouncing uh, an Irish surname, and I apologize for that. I was born in Sicily during the uh, First Mafia War and I grew up during the Second Mafia War. So my 20 years spent in Sicily, when I was a young man, 15, was spent in a war zone. Something similar to your uh, troubles. So I, I, can, uh, I can understand what happened here, because I lived something similar in, in my own country, in Sicily. I'm sure that you are asking um, um, something about Sicily. I know the question is coming. I'll tell you a little bit later. But first of all, let me give a report about the work. I came to England um, several years ago. And I've been working for the Protestant Alliance for five years. I did some volunteer work for the Protestant Alliance many years ago. Uh, my connection goes back to 1988, to the Protestant Alliance, when I basically first arrived. The Protestant Alliance is a non-denominational organization whose aim is to educate the believers on the great truths of the Reformation. And uh, the aim is also to, uh, was founded to fight against Anglo-Catholicism. Anglo Our founder was the Herald of Shaftesbury, who was founded in 1951. <coughs> Uh, the Protestant Alliance is not a political organization, so we don't, now, uh, we don't deal with politics, we don't get involved with politics. And we produce a magazine, The Young Reformer. We used to produce The Young Reformer as well, but now the two are in one. Uh, I do write articles for The Reformer. The Young Reformer is part of my job as well, so I try to write for young people. And I, uh, I write two other articles in, in every issue, one is to deal with current affairs in, Roman, in the Roman Catholic Church, and the older is mainly about doctrine, uh, to help believers to compare the doctrines of Rome with the doctrines of the Bible. We have, um, we have, we have maintained 40 martyrs memorial open-air meetings. In England, as probably you're aware, uh, some preachers, street preachers have been arrested and there have been issues, but because we have been doing this kind of, of, of work for many years, mercifully, uh, the police does not disturb us. We actually tell them that we're going to uh, have the meeting, such as such a, the Martyrs Memorial, and we uh, give the history of the, mem the memorial, we talk about the martyr, but we always bring the gospel. It's n we are not just a mere historical uh, society. We, are, we have to bring the gospel. In everything we do, we have to point souls to Christ. Why did the martyrs die? They were not the martyrs of a political cause. They were the martyrs of the Christian faith. 
They died because they loved Christ. And so we uh, be that they died because they knew the salvation of Christ. We also uh, go to uh, agricultural shows. We maintain, uh, we go to four agricultural shows, one in Devon at the Exeter Show where I meet regularly Reverend Power. Uh, Larry Power comes to, the, uh, to Devon and he enjoys wearing his dark glasses and trying to harass me pretending to be a Roman Catholic. And it's quite interesting. We have very good friends, so he, 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 he actually... Uh, and then he takes his glasses off and he says, Me, Marco, you've you done well. You've done well. But it is a good occasion to distribute Christian literature. We distribute leaflets which have a historical content and a gospel message. We do one show in, back in Ellsbury, the back show, and then in Surrey, and one in Carlisle. And occasionally we do help other all the believers who may be in a show as well. It's not our show, but we help them as well. Sadly, we would love to go to all the shows, but they, the organizer tried to impose on us to work on the Lord's Day. And we can't be in, in the show on the Lord's Day because we are also preaching on the Lord's Day. We are helping churches which have no, no, no pastor or no preacher. So we have, uh, the Protestant Alliance is down to two. There are only two people working for the Protestant Alliance. So you can, and in England we often have uh, difficulties because many churches don't like the word Protestant. So here we are, we are uh, uh, trying to maintain a witness, trying to maintain a gospel cause, trying to uh, maintain a reformation truth, a light, on the mainland, and often uh, we are uh, uh, not liked because of the word Protestant. In, during the, sh in the agricultural shows, our main, our, uh, we have great conversation with Roman Catholics, and the main uh, problem are the liberal Protestants. I have great conversation with Roman Catholics, but uh, the, the uh, nominal pro Protestant, liberal Protestants are a real uh, problem. Now come into my testimony, and we will look at the scripture as well, because in a way, uh, I, am, I am a Manasseh. No, I'm not proud of it. I don't, uh, uh, I think this, the account of Manasseh reflects somehow a little bit my personal testimony. I was born in Sicily, as I told you before, if you are going to ask about my connection with the Mafia, I just tell you I am the great-grandson of the Godfather. So I hope your curiosity is satisfied <laughs> so that uh, there is an uh, a, a interesting connection. I was christened in the Roman Catholic Church on the 9th of April, uh, 67, so you can guess my age. And um, my parents were converted when I was about two years old. My father was a right-wing terrorist. He abandoned the family, abandoned my, mo my mother and me. My mother was suspecting number two, and we lived in the north of Italy. And my mother was converted. Her neighbors were Protestants. There's no benefit in Italy. So suddenly this young mother left with two children, well, child, and they fed us, clothed us, paid the rent, because as soon as my mother was deserted, the family didn't want to know. And our family, a Roman Catholic family, is a very boastful family, strong, and they used to pride and boast about the fact that they were the persecutors of Protestants during the fascist regime. So I come from a family of persecutors of Protestants. So you can imagine when my parents, when my father was converted in, in France, when he was in the French religion, my mother was converted in Genoa. Neither of the two knew about it. The other was, became a Christian. They, the Lord brought them back together, and they started uh, a gospel work. We attended a Valdensian church, which is a Presbyterian church. And I remember um, uh, the idol Catechism has been taught and also uh, there was a lot of politics 
one day I got up from the Sunday school, went back to the Sunday school, and walked back because the teacher started to teach Karl Marx. So we are to, I say, not here to learn about Karl Marx, I'm here to learn about Christ. So when my parents saw me walking back into the main um, church, you usually were sent back if you were naughty, uh, they were all wondering what happened, but um, that was my upbringing. Dear, in the large family, we are bishop. A great uncle was a Roman Catholic bishop. We have a saint. So you can imagine the reaction of my grandparents when my parents became Protestants. So they were disinherited, disowned, and um, ostracized. So uh, my parents, this, they were, they were um, disappointed with the Valdensian church because they were always politics. You know, they didn't preach the word of God. The pastor used to open the newspaper. <laughs> that was, I never heard a sermon. And, um, and we, the, the Lord led them to start a work by faith. So they start working by, with a radio station. We didn't know about anything about mission boards, and they start evangelizing the, uh, in a very mafia-ruled area of the town. Now, Manasseh is interesting because Manasseh was the uh, son of a good man. His father, Zechariah, was a good king. And his father had the work to undo what his father had done. And it's interesting that um, he, he reigned for a long time, 55 years. Now, my friend, 55 years, and if you, no, if you, I'll, leave, I'll leave to you the math. Uh, the Queen the, the Elizabeth II reigned from 1952 until now. It's still reigning. It's a long reign. Now, 55 years is a, quite a few generations. We don't know exactly when uh, it started, but we have here in the account, he was 12 years old when he began to reign, and reigned 55 years, and did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. The kingdom of Israel is gone. There's only the kingdom of Judah. Even they knew about what happened to Israel, because of what happened to a people who was rebellious. They were aware of the consequences of sin, or the consequences of rebellion. But it's interesting what Manasseh did. You know, he not only did evil, but here the chronicle gives us a very interesting list of what he did. He built, the, he built again. He built again the high places. He built again the altars of Baalim. He built again the things which his father destroyed. But only that, he added he even dared to build within the temple. Previous kings did not care about the temple when they were evil. They just neglected the worship of the Lord. They left the temple going to disrepair. But Manasseh is mentioned here as being the one who built altars for the host of heaven in the courts of the temple, who even set a carved image in the very temple. Now, I was a, a good student as a boy, I have been the son of a, my father was the pastor of a Baptist church. We lived literally above the church building. Church building was a coffin factory. So kind of interesting, interesting use. I never missed a service in my life unless I was contagious. If I were contagious, I would, I would, I would be left home. Otherwise, I'll be in the congregation. Midweek meetings, morning service, evening service, and we have two midweek mid, 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 mid meetings. But at one stage, 
as a teenager, I started to rebel. You see, I looked at my father and I thought of him as a failure. Because he should have done what he was supposed to do, overthrow the government, restore the monarchy. That was what the purpose of no, we, 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 we are royalists in our family. We're not a Republican. So I looked at my father and thought it was, it was a failure. And so I, I, I rebelled. I was a good Protestant. Oh, yes, I was a good Protestant. My uncle, the bishop, could come in our house and I loved to tear him down. I could take on a bishop. And every time he came to our house to visit, I enjoyed tearing him down. That's not something, I'm not proud of it, because it was done in the wrong spirit. It was done just to show him off, to show that I was able to tear him down. It was none to witness to him. He wasn't done with the purpose to make him think about what he believed and lead him to the Savior. He was done because I had to prove that I knew better, I was better than he was. That for a 15-year-old boy. So here I was, I was, I led a double life. You see, Manasseh here, uh, it, it, it was doing in a way, he was rebelling. He was doing, he did a lot of things which were, were, he caused his children to pass through the fire. He actually practiced human sacrifice. And he, he observed times, all the witchcraft. And we're told in verse 6, he wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. One of my purposes was I was uh, really living a double life uh, because I, had to, I lived in a pastor's house, in a pastor's family, but I didn't want to be the pastor's son. And I had this conflict. I knew the truth of the truth. I knew of the gospel. I knew of Christ, but I didn't care. My purpose was in life was to become a journalist, a war correspondent, and live a very short life. So I, I, I rebelled. And also I, I enjoyed embarrassing my father because you know, in my family, in my greater family, the British and the Americans were always the enemy. You're talking <laughs> World War II was still going on in our family, in my grandparents' house. So, you know, I was, I was, it was very, uh, I, my, one of my hobbies was to embarrass my father when we had American and British people coming around. And the Lord sent American and British missionaries to talk to me about the gospel, and I will always be a stubborn. And the Lord has a great sense of humor, if I may so, so reverently. He sends me to England in an American church. My life was really a disaster. I was a good student in high school. I, went, I was the only Protestant student who was admitted in Jesuit college because it was the top college for classics. I had top marks. The Lord has sent his missionaries to war me. Manasseh, the Lord spoke to Manasseh, we are told in, uh, in um, verse 10, the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they will not hearken. Is the Lord talking to you? And you are not listening today. If they will, it will not hearken, I will not listen. You know, that my friends, there is an interesting thing when we, uh, the Lord has given us the privilege to hear the gospel sound. We are given the privilege to read the Bible. We are, have the privilege to have been born and brought up in a Christian family. 
And it's a terrible thing when we reject all that. So it's a warning for the young people here. Be careful. God does not have grandchildren. Because I thought at one stage, I'm a Protestant. I'm okay. I don't need all this religion. I have the right religion. I had our religion. But I didn't have the Savior. So the Lord in his... Um, the Lord had to break me down. It really had. Because I was very stubborn. I was not... Uh, the word humility was not known in my dictionary. <coughs> I'm not going to give you, my friends, I'm not, I, I, I will not give you a list of my sins because I believe that when you give your testimony, you are not to exalt your sins by the Savior. I, I, I was famous among my friends. I'll just give you one example, but that's it. I was famous for being able to drink and not get drunk. They would be all on the floor, drunk, and I would, I would go home sober as anything. But that's it. I won't give you any more. I won't give you any more list of my sins. I did sin. I broke the Ten Commandments. So the Lord had to deal with me. He had to deal, as he did, dealt with Manasseh. What did he do to Manasseh? Manasseh was trusting in his a wizard, in his familiar spirit, in his idols, in his paganism, in his hot cult, because that's basically what he was trusting, and he was doing what all the other nations were doing, because he thought, if I'm like the other nations, now you're men and girls, don't try to be like the others, if they're not Christian. You have to be like Christ. We are called to be like Christ. So he was there, there, he was trying to be like the others, and the Lord sent the captains of Assyria to punish him. And he brought upon them, verse 11, the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns and bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. A couple of events during that time. I plummeted down. I couldn't keep up a double life. And so I decided to end my life. And as a true Sicilian, it had to look like an accident. So there I was, I'm not going to give you details, there's no importance about the details of the method. I uh, prepare myself to, to end my life, look unto heaven and say to God, you are not going to stop me. You cannot stop him, stop me. So I tried the first, he tried everything. It was, whatever I planned was working in full working order. Then I prepare myself. I did it. It didn't work. That alone should say something, shouldn't it? But I was stubborn, checked everything again, and um, said again, you are not going to stop me. Say that to God. Did it again, and this time it didn't work either. Apparently, it appears that the Almighty God didn't want me to die that way. And so, I was humiliated. My pride was put down. I don't usually give my testimony in many places. So, but I, I hope that uh, I wanted to encourage you 
I'm in many ways, I am an example. You don't want to follow, you know, don't you want to follow my example before my conversion. And I hope to grow to be a godly example for the future. But it, it, I was defeated. I had to acknowledge that God is sovereign. I had to acknowledge that I offended that three times only God. That I sinned. That I sinned against uh, the truth I knew of. The Bible was read every day in my house. Now, I'm going to ask a question. Are you a nominal Protestant or are you a born-again Protestant? You know, if you're a nominal Protestant, uh, it's a bit of a contradiction because in order to be a Protestant, you need to be a born-again believer. There's no such, such a thing as a nominal Protestant. There's no such a thing as a political Protestant either. You have to be a born-again believer. Because if you don't have the truth, what are you protesting for? If you don't have the Savior, what are you defending the faith against? You have no Savior. So I, I like, like Manasseh, Manasseh was humble. I had to humble myself before the Lord or my Father. And Manasseh prayed. Oh, let me tell you, when you do try to do what I did try to do, and I never encourage you to do it, and everything fails, and you realize that the Lord God is only the Almighty God, you pray. I was brought up in my culture, men don't cry. I was in tears. And let me tell you, br brothers, if Christ cried, if Christ wept, we can cry too. And so, he was defeated. And he prayed. And, in, and entreated the Lord. Oh, I had to entreat him. Because I sinned knowingly. Because I sinned knowing that what I was doing was leading others to sin. I was not a good example. So Manasseh humbled himself. But it's another thing which was Interesting, he prayed, we are told in verse 13, and he was entreated and he heard his supplication. You know, Manasseh was restored to his kingdom. And I remember one time when this, during this period, because the Lord was working on me, I was reading the Gospel of John and I read the Gospel of John in one sitting. And if you do that, you'll get great, great benefit. And in, in, was in one place I was reading as I was commuting from Palermo, the capital, to the town I lived for school. It was through the reading of scripture. I must have read the Gospel of John several times. But at that time, I knew the Lord was God. It was a difference. You see, Manasseh here. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. He was not, he didn't know about God. He knew about God, but he, know, he did not know God. There's a big difference. You know about some, someone, but you know, when you know someone, it's a different story, isn't it? And so, here we have, he had to basically sur surrender. And so I knew the Lord was gracious and merciful that he manifest, he made me know him as the Lord.
You know, they, when we are born again, life changes. We have made a new creature. And so Manasseh, you are told, he actually, he, he was the one, if you read the account in Chronicles <laughs> and Second King, he was a murderous man. He filled Jerusalem with blood. He was a terrible man. I didn't kill anyone. I can tell you this. I haven't killed anybody. <laughs> I'm not a murderer. But um, it's interesting what the Lord, as the Lord changes him. He took away the strange gods. Oh, I had my own gods. I had my own gods. We can all, we, we can all have our own private gods, you know. Whatever takes the place, first place in our heart is an idol. However legitimate it may be. I had my own gods. And so I had to uh, undo a lot of things. Manasseh had to take away the strange gods. And people were noticing that, um, Marco, are you coming down for us to a, with us to a party? No. Not coming. Marco, will you come down to us to this place? No, not coming. What's wrong with you, Marco? I'm not coming. I'm done. No more. So the, um, the Lord really uh, changes life. He turns, he turns up the life of a man, a woman, upside down when they are converted. And so Manasseh had to take away the strange gods. He took the idol out of the, of the house of the Lord. All the altars. I had each, we, we can all do that. We can have, we have when we have, we are away from God, we build, we'll build, build altars to the gods of our imagination. Work, sport, Hobbies, everything which takes the, um, the first place in our heart before God is an idol. Wife, husband, children. So, Manasseh takes away all these idols because he's focusing on it repairs the altar of the Lord. But a beautiful picture to repair what has neglected. The, um, this is the effect of the new birth. I, I don't know you. This is my first time in this church, so I don't presume. But are you a born-again believer? Don't think because you are the son or daughter of believers, you are automatically one. You need to trust Christ yourself. And are idols being built up in your heart? Because I have started. This is how I started my life. I wanted to be a journalist. So I want to be in touch with the journalist circles. Then I, want, I was more into the world. And then certain circles demand certain uh, hobbies. And certain circles are this compromise, this moral compromise. They all start in a nice way. So when we are born again, when we know Christ as a Lord and Savior, we, need, we are a new creature. And we need, to make, we need to get rid of the things of the past. I literally, um, I love books. I probably shared that with someone earlier on. But the books I used to read before my conversion, you were not, um, uh, they, were not, they were not immoral books, don't get me wrong. There was no immorality as such, but they were not edifying books. They were terrible books. So they all ended up in the bin. 
When the law changes you, it's, it's inter- you need to get rid of all the things of the past, get rid of the sinful habits, get rid of your old friends. I am not in touch with any of my old friends of that period, although um, I'm in touch with some school friends who survived the uh, civil war, the uh, mafia wars, and tried to witness to them. Now, what can we learn from this passage? Because I don't want to, I don't want to detain you. The first thing is the, the uh, danger of religious pluralism. Manasseh thought that he could serve all the gods of the pagans in order to be in the good books with the pagans. And as the beginning, of the decline, the spiritual decline of a nation. He should have kept to the Lord or the Bible, but he didn't. And we, uh, I mean, uh, I talk now, uh, the Valdensian were a persecuted church. It's probably the oldest Presbyterian church in the world. And they were persecuted, bitterly, haunted, massacred, during the war, they used to send them to Auschwitz as Jews. That's the dark side history of World War II in Italy. The Protestant was sent to Auschwitz as Jews. And then, after the war, after all the bloodshed, they compromised with politics, communism. They took away the Bible. They started to want to be like the others. Do you want to be like the others? No, you must not. You must be like Christ. We are called to be like Christ. We've been predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ. There's another lesson we can learn from this is the failure. The failure of generations. You see, the failure was Manasseh did not learn the lesson from his father. He did not the lesson from his grandfather. He did not know the lesson about knowing what his grandfather had done and what he caused in Israel, in Judah, and what his father had done to repair what his grandfather, uh, the, the evil his grandfather had done. There is the failure of learning from history. Why are you a Protestant? Why are you a Protestant? Because we are Protestant, because we are through the Reformation, we have learned about salvation by grace alone. We learned about the Bible alone, faith alone. How much did it cost? How many people suffered in the past for these principles? Many. How many people are suffering today for these very principles in other countries? Many. The Reformation is not over. So we need to look at the, uh, we need to look, my friends, at the importance of the truth which were laid down in the scriptures and the truth which was rediscovered at the time of the Reformation. But it's also another lesson to learn here. The place of prayer. Sound doctrine goes with sound living and a prayerful life. Do we pray? Do we pray for the conversions of conversion of nominal Protestants? We must not assume because a person goes to a church, is a Protestant church, is a Protestant. Do we pray for the conversion of Roman Catholics? Do we pray for the conversion of Roman Catholics both in the province and across the board? After all, they are your people in a way. It's the Irish people. You may have a political divide, a boundary, whatever. Now, I'm Sicilian, so I understand because Sicily wants to be independent. We don't want to be part of Italy but we still pray for the Italians. 
So here we are. Do, so let's learn, look at these things. We have the word of God. We have the truth which will set you free. We must warn people like, against the uh, um, pluralism of religion. We're told that you can go to heaven anywhere any you want. No, that is not. There's only one way, and it's Christ. Learn from history. Not only church history, but Bible history. Because there are examples there. There are events there. And let's pray. Let us be much in prayer for a revival in our personal life, for a revival in our family life, for a revival in our church life. It starts from us. We cannot pray for a revival in the nation unless the Lord revive us first. Let us conclude with a word of prayer and then pastor you, if you take, take over. Almighty God, we come before thy throne of grace this morning and we thank thee again for thy word. We thank thee that thou didst have mercy to uh, save such one as Manasseh. And probably many of us, some of us could relate our testimony to a Manasseh experience. We are not here to exalt our sins. We are here to exalt the Savior. Yes. Oh Lord, I, pr I pray this morning that his word, my, that my small testimony uh, with his meditation upon thy word would be of encouragement to this church, to the young people. And I pray, we pray for the young generations that they will uh, maintain the gospel truth, that thou will work in their hearts, that they will not compromise, that they will not indulge in sin, that they will not give in to temptations. And whenever, if they fail, Lord, that thou will be merciful and restore them to thyself. Strengthen this church, we beseech thee, O Lord. May we always learn from thy word, from the lessons of history, not to be a, um, arrogant or to be uh, uh, to uh, teach or to, to be uh, patriotic towards others who may differ from us, but to, avoid, to learn godly examples, to learn examples to avoid and examples to follow. Encourage us, O Lord, we beseech thee. We pray for the uh, gospel work here, for the forthcoming young people meeting. O Lord, it is that thou would work in their hearts, that many will be saved. And Lord, we pray that thou would raise men who are willing and desiring to be thy ministers. Not only, O oh Lord, in this denomination, but in, England, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the church in this country, Amen. as we desperately need, desperately, Lord, we need men able to preach. Amen. Lead us, O oh Lord, in, a, in everything we do, in Jesus' name. do on your behalf want to thank Marco for coming this morning and we appreciate that word of personal testimony and we do thank the little sketch that he's given about the work of the Protestant Alliance and this um, message that he shared with us from the scriptures about the life of Manasseh.